In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a bar chart for two means. I'm also going to show you how to add 95% confidence intervals to those means in the bar chart. So this example has a dependent variable which is perceived intelligence as rated by people evaluating faces with and without glasses. So the independent variable here is glasses. This is the grouping variable. And we've got zeros for no glasses and ones for yes glasses. So to create the graph, go into graphs, legacy dialogues, bar chart. Make sure you're on simple and summaries of groups of cases what you want for this particular bar chart. But these are also potentially useful alternatives that I may present in future videos across the textbook. For this one here, for between groups, we want summaries of groups of cases. Click Define. And you can see bars represent. You want to put other statistic, and the mean is the one we want, and put the dependent variable in there, and click Change Statistic, and you'll see that mean of values is the default. And that's what you want. You could change it to median if you wanted, or mode, and you have other alternatives here. But mean of values is typically what you're going to want. You also want to put your grouping variable as the category axis. Now finally, click on Options, and you want to display error bars. The default is confidence intervals at 95%, and you could change that theoretically to 99% if you want, or 90 but typically you'll want to put 95%, especially if you're testing a null hypothesis with alpha equal 0.05. You also have the option of doing standard errors on the bar chart of standard deviation. I really don't understand why people would want to do that. I do think confidence intervals is pretty much your best option, probably in almost all cases. Click continue and click OK. And so here we have the bar chart, and you can see that it looks nothing like what I put in the textbook. So I'm going to clean this up a bit and make it look a bit better. First thing I'm going to do is double click on the chart and open up the chart editor and I'm going to double click on the scale here where the numbers are because I want to add that to 7 as a maximum and 1 as the minimum and click OK. And I also want to change the bar chart size and you can see you have bar options and the width of the bar might turn that down to about 40. Click apply. And I'm also going to double click on here and get rid of the fill and the border. And we're getting closer. I can get rid of this error bars 95%. Just click on it once with a left click and then a left click again. And then you can delete it. And I'd probably delete this thing as well. You just have to click on it once and then click on it again. And you'll be able to do what you want with it. Change the font size here to 12 and bold. So we're getting closer to what I actually presented in the textbook rather. And over here I might write something like intelligence rating. And now I need to shrink the size of the bar chart, the entire thing, and reduce the size. So if you click on chart size, you can maintain aspect ratio, but I actually want to reduce the width more than I do the height. And so we can see what that looks like. Usually it looks best when it's actually square. So you want something like 4 by 4. I don't want to maintain the aspect ratio. So 4 by 4. And that's what that looks like. And I could change the color to something like that. Change the font size of this. Change it to 12. Bold it. There we go. Probably still a little bit too big. Chart size maybe 3.25 by 3.25. There we go. We could even make it smaller. The last thing I'm going to do is kind of manipulate the confidence interval bars. And you just have to try to click on it and then maybe increase the weight to 1.5. And increase the weighting of the boxes themselves. 1.5. It's pretty pretty strong, but not bad. Probably still a little bit too big. So let me just reduce the size of that even more. Something like that. A little bit more. There we go. That's It's probably a little too small now. <laughs> kind of going back and forth, but... The last thing I'm going to point out is that this bar chart has the 95% confidence intervals overlap. I can show that even better if I reduce the 
distance between these two bars. But you can see that the 95% confidence intervals, the upper bound and the lower bound, they actually intersect with each other. Like this bar, the lower bound exceeds the upper bound of the groups, and that can be consistent with the difference between two means. So if I do an a independent sample t-test, I've got a significant effect here. So 0, 1, continue. And we can see that there is a statistically significant effect, p less than 0 0.05, and the 95% confidence intervals intersect. That's perfectly legitimate. In fact, they can intersect about 50% roughly. In rough terms, as long as the error bars are overlapping less than 50% roughly, you'll get a significant effect. Now, I suppose that's one of the reasons I'm not a huge fan of reporting confidence intervals in bar charts. I don't necessarily know what, what you're supposed to get from that. Uh, I've got mixed views about it. I can see some benefits, but overall, you can have overlapping bars and it's still statistically significantly different. Anyway, so that's a tutorial on creating a bar chart with 95% confidence intervals in SPSS.